Oh, hi there, and welcome to North of Weatherfield, a Canadian Coronation Street podcast. Hold for theme. <laughs> we don't have a theme. We might by the time mm. this is ready tomorrow. Uh, this week we are talking about episodes that aired in Canada, uh, from January 15th to January 19th, and we will talk about what happened. So if you haven't watched it yet and want to, don't watch right now. Or don't listen right now. People could just be listening too. Oh, that's the best way to do it. Well, so we're not going to put the scores on the screen. <laughs> Steven, zero. <laughs> Uh, so, one. Exactly. So we, thank you so much if you've been listening. This is episode three and uh, we've gotten lots of great feedback and uh, we're available through all of your podcast platforms and also through Substack. And uh, we've got a growing little list of people who are being updated every time there's a new episode out there, which is great. So if you aren't there yet, feel free to go to north of weatherfield.substack.com. North of weatherfield.substack.com. That was a lot of words. Please don't do the paid subscription. Just do the free one. Listen, don't stop people from giving us money, Shannon. No, we have to wait and see if we're going to keep doing it first. Yeah, that's true. Don't pay for a year. Might not be. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. You want to yeah. pay for a month? Sure. <laughs> Why not? Roll the dice. Low stakes. Anyway, uh, I'm Brittle Star. You're going to end up with a gambling problem, just like Edison. Shh. I'm Brittle Star. I'm Shannon. These aren't our real names. Our names are... Oh, we should really think this through before we start. I'm going to be Daisy because everything I say is going to be quite intense. Mm, that was pretty good. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to be... Oh, I was going to be Ed's dad, but then that, I don't think I'm allowed to do that impersonation. So yeah, I won't For do so that. many reasons. <laughs> for so... Like, not just one. Many. It's obviously not my ability to do impersonations because I could just Go on. nail no, that. But we're not so supposed good. to do an impersonation. Okay, uh, channeling I'm channeling this person. I'm going to be channeling. Uh, I'm going to be channeling. Oh, uh, uh, Dee Dee's boyfriend, whatever his name is. What's his name? I'm not shaking my head because you don't know his name. I'm shaking my head because you decided to be him. Okay, go on. What characteristic does we does he have? He's got good hair and he's nice. <laughs> That fits. Well, go with, like we, go with go with your opposite, polar opposite. No, no, it's like we were separated at birth. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. He was born decades after me, but that's okay. Okay, now we've lost so many people who are tuning in for the first time. All right. So mm -hmm. one of the first things we're going to talk about that happened this week. Are you going to run through a word, like an overview first? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. We're going to talk about uh, Jenny and Daisy mm -hmm. and the money in the pub. Yeah. We're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about Roy and Evelyn and their relationship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're going to talk um, about Tony collecting his debt from Ed. Yeah. And uh, everything that happened with Ed with that. We are going to talk about uh, the hellscape that is Christmas Day at the Barlows every year. Yeah. Uh, and we are going to talk about uh, Peter. And his gift from Carla for Christmas and okay. the knock on effects of that. Yeah. And then luckily, yeah. from all the people who helped update us with answering this question accidentally last week when we didn't know we'd ever need to know this. Yeah. We're gonna talk about Rob's Carla's brother's son that appears. <gasps> bah, bah, bah. Some of us had forgotten I mean, Rob existed until recently. I didn't mean bah, 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 man. Bah, 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 bah. There you go. All right, uh, Jenny and Daisy. So yeah, they've now both agreed to that they're going to steal the money. Yeah, and uh, but they're going to pay Carla back somehow secretly. And we're clear on the notion that uh, on the determination that they are stealing the money, correct? Like the, we that, they have they have decided they are taking all that money. Well, I know they're taking the money, but have we decided that it's theft? Do you think it's theft? Because Daisy, her argument is that is she that Jenny deserves the money because Jenny was put through a tremendous amount. And yeah, it's still theft. Even if she deserved it, it's still theft. It was Carla's money. Mm. We we sorted that last week. Come on. Yeah. All right. Um. So they decide they're going to do this somehow, mysteriously pay Carla back without Carla noticing two hundred and fifty thousand pounds mm -hmm. reappearing. Mm -hmm. Um, and then wrench a spanner in the works. Uh, nice Corey reference. Thank you. Uh, cool. they don't just Term. get the. 
to buy the pub. They're sealed bids, which means someone else is bidding for the pub and they don't know who. Right. And they have to bid as much as they can. Right. So who, first of all, who do you think is bidding for the pub? Is it someone we know or a stranger? I think it's a stranger and I think it's a potentially, it's potentially a new character. Like mm -hmm. the guy who came in to the shop. Remember the guy came in and he was. Oh, uh, to buy the flowers from. From uh, Tracy. Tracy. Yeah. Oh, oh, all right. Right? Yeah. Because he had a lot of lines. And after watching, watching uh, Coronation Street for so long, we determined that if they say their first and last name, or if they have more than four or five lines. On their first appearance. In their first appearance, there's a good chance they're going to stick around. Hello, I'm Molly Hardcastle. Exactly. She stayed for quite a while. Until the tram took her out. Did it? I think it was the tram, wasn't it? Maybe. Was it the tram crash? Maybe. Um, all right. See, so I could. People I, don't last very long on the street. I could do. Yeah, I like that guy. He was a. Uh, usually they start the characters off more annoying. Yeah, no, he was pretty good. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll see. So I think it's that. But I think I think ultimately, though, I think that it's going to go to Jenny and Daisy. And because it's going to create more conflict if they've, they've stolen the money. And then they can't spend it on the pub. It's going to be difficult for them to hide the fact that they have just this massive influx of cash. So they're all, all consternation and worry that it was sealed bids. So they were going to have to. In case they were gazumpted or gazundered or. Yeah, gazumpted. Gazumpted. But that's not in sealed bids. That's oh. after you've done it. But they were worried because they'd have to put all the money in. Yeah. None of it's their money. Why are they like, it's all play money. Why are well, they, they worried want, about this? They want a little fun money. <laughs> at the end, we thought all fun money was going back to Carl. So they're going to feel guilty, and they got to get over that guilt, and maybe a little trip somewhere. I mean, it might help them get over the guilt by the fact that Carla is apparently once again the factory's on its feet, doing a roaring trade. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Um, but yeah, no, I think that they're going. I think it's going to be Jenny and Daisy that end up winning anyway. They're going to get it, and it's going to be that, or maybe, maybe. It's going to be a little hybrid and there's going to be a love interest aspect between the guy with who bought the flowers from Tracy mm -hmm. and Daisy and or Jenny. Jenny he's kind of in between. Jenny pulls the, the younger guys every once in a while. She sure does. <laughs> so she keeps her bangs long so you can't see how old she is. <laughs> That's terrible, <laughs> but probably accurate and crafty on her part. Um, all right. Next. Roy, his gift to Evelyn. So for Christmas, mm -hmm. at Cassie's suggestion, yeah, he went and got this first edition book that had been Evelyn's favorite book. Right. But I don't know if it was, I think, was it her abusive ex-husband that had destroyed it or something? I'm not sure. Yeah. So first of all, is Cassie, do you think Cassie is trying to play matchmaker? Or do you think she's just like stirring stuff up and she's just like eh, because she said to roy uh my mom has got you a very personal and thoughtful gift for christmas you should do the same do you do i think Cassie's but, but evelyn evelyn hadn't bought roy a very personal gift yeah she, well you think that cassie's matchmaking a little bit. well is she well it seems like she's matchmaking but is she matchmaking or is she just bored no, I don't think that she's bored. I think that th that wouldn't be enough to keep someone like Cassie entertained. Mm -hmm. I think that she's she's trying to do nice things because this is the crux of Cassie's character is that she the 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 the, the, the contradiction in her character. What's it called? Paradox. <laughs> I don't know uh, where um, she's she's not a great person. And she's constantly doing the wrong thing, but it's the road to hell is paved with good intentions. She, she's trying to do the nice thing all the time. She's trying right. to do the right thing, trying to be nice and kind. But in doing those actions, she's not. Like when they went to get the book, her and Roy went to get the book and Roy's car didn't work. Right. And then they ended up taking that Porsche from the garage. Right. She's just doing a favor for Roy. Right. She's being nice. However. <laughs> Stealing a Porsche from your boss's business yeah. is not good. Yeah. 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 Uh, do you think that Roy and Evelyn will develop a... It was pretty close there, I tell you. Mm -hmm. It was because there was a moment there where uh, Roy was trying to get the paper bag uh, handle off of Evelyn's hand. Mm -hmm. And they were pretty close. Yeah. They were pretty close. I don't think... Has Roy had any action since Haley? I don't think so. He deserves some. Mm -hmm. And I think I was thinking, actually, we watched that scene and I thought, Haley's looking down. In her red anorak. In her red anorak. 
<laughs> saying, on you go, Roy. Get in there. What if Roy makes Evelyn wear the red anorak? But here's a better question, Shannon. Do we think that here's do, do we think that Evelyn uh, and if Evelyn and Roy get together, okay, become yeah. romantically involved, okay, will it dramatically alter Evelyn's character? I think it'll soften her because she has a soft side. I think she'll show more of her soft side. Because I, I won't say who, but do you remember there was a person that we knew that worked somewhere and uh, in in like a shop type business type area. And they were really horrible. And then they suddenly had a boyfriend and they were really nice. Yes. Right? Yeah. So I think that's a potential for Evelyn. Her whole character could change dramatically. Because mm -hmm. they all all the characters do change. Not all of them, but most of them can't change dramatically. Yes, they tend to. Yeah, they go through. Yeah. Arc, oops. They go through many arcs. Like David was a hellion. Yeah. And now he's he's kind of he's yeah. a bit wacky, but, but he's pretty calm. But you know, they're just get, gearing up to dislike him again in a year or two. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. Okay. Uh, Tony, Ed's subcontractor worker yeah, that he yeah, hired. Yeah. Um. He's so he's deal. he's been coming around for three weeks. Yeah. Trying to collect the money he's owed. Yeah. For the work he did. Mm -hmm. Um. Now, I think it was five hundred pounds he was owed. That's what I believe it was. Which is a lot of money, but not like. But it's a doable amount of money. It's enough money that if you're really stuck, you could have a whip round. To the family, the family would be like, "Listen, I can give you a couple hundred pounds." I I'll also, I also feel that we have seen Edison with more than five hundred pounds in cash in his hand at least three times since he has owed Tony this money. Well, this is the problem, Shannon, is because he's got a gambling addiction, and he's gambling it away instead. He's, because he, he's again, this is a good. This whole week has been a morality lesson. Has on, it? on Coronation Street. Okay, I thought something that happened to us. <laughs> no, we've learned nothing. Uh, it's all road to hell, paved with good intentions. Yeah. Because I'm sure uh, Ed is thinking that he, if he gambles the money, he'll have more money, and therefore it'll first of all get him out of the hole. But then he'll be able to be like a good dad, he, good is granddad. Even, is he even thinking that far ahead? I think he is. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. I think he is. So Tony came in, beat Ed up. I'm not going to use the word saying Tony stole the presents because Ed he gave him he the didn't presents. He really beat Ed up. He, he, he took a swing at him and hit him. He got him. Hit him once. Bloody nose. Yeah. Um, but like he took the gifts with Ed's consent and help. Yeah. So stolen is not the word I'll use. No, he said, listen, Forcefully buddy. Forcefully claimed. Yeah. Listen, buddy, we got to get, I got to get my money because my kids are going to go without. Yeah. So we, I can't have my kids going without when you owe me money and your kids have got a bunch of stuff. So first of all, was Tony in the right or in the wrong there? Well, look, you shouldn't be stealing things. I think Tony should have just gone to small claims court, but maybe that's <laughs> harder than it seems. I mean, in, in England, they have bailiffs. I do believe you could just have hire a, you Who could would spend money to take their TV. Basically. And, and their gifts. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, I mean, the, but the problem comes down, should Tony have done it? No. But Tony was pushed it back into a corner. You know what I mean? He was like, he was put into a terrible position where he's trying to make a, a go of things. Cause what, wasn't he in prison as well? Yeah. He was in I prison so. for a while, yeah. which made him hard to hire. Ed was giving him a break. Another good intention. Or taking advantage cause he hadn't paid the other subcontractors. Another good intention in the cobbled road to hell. <laughs> and, uh, he was trying to make good, trying to be, except then he was left high and dry by, by Edison. I don't fault him. You think it's okay for I don't. I don't know if I'd have taken all the presents. But you would, you're fine with it though. I'm not fine with it, but I, like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. What else do you expect? Yeah. But then anyways, it Gloria. led. Oh, poor Gloria. Glory. Glory. I thought it was Gloria. No. Isn't it? No, definitely Her name's not. Glory? Yes. Oh. Sorry, Glory. It's okay. She's a newborn. How would you know? She's not a newborn now. She's a toddler now. That's right. She's been on the show for a long time. Oh, I walked into the trap. <laughs> um, so the fact straight down the ginnel into a ambush into so I'm, I'm into all, the outside loo. I'm changing all my references to Coronation Street references. <laughs> um, the factory lot bought a Wendy house at the uh, pawn shop. Yes. To give to specifically, uh, what's her face to replace Is Lori's John, one, right? Yeah. Then it turned out it was the Wendy house. Here's the thing I liked about that. Uh -huh. Okay. So you're, as you said, they, Izzy and Sean went out to the pawn shop, found the, is it Wendy? Wendy house. Wendy house. Mm -hmm. A dollhouse thing for glory. 
we all know her name and love it. And uh, it was supposed to be customized by having a number three on the door. And when they pulled the door out of the box, it had a felt sticky number three on it. And I thought, well, that's not really customized, is it? It's just, well, it's, maybe- it made it sound initially, Ed made it sound like, oh, I've customized it and it's all carved and maybe, custom mill Maybe and- it was Maybe it was um, painted a different color. I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, it looked like they had slapped Listen, a number three on it. You it. would be looking for your work to be allotted forever if you had put that number three on that house. What do you mean? You would be looking for positive affirmation of the great oh, customization. Jo- yes. But I, well, I wouldn't just put in, I wouldn't slap a number three felt number three on it and just say, look how I customized it. That's not right. I mean, technically, yes. <laughs> Even I have standards. Uh, so the pawn shop gave Craig footage of the stuff being dropped off. Oh, yeah. And, uh... Thank God for Craig Tinker. I know. And, of course, uh, Ed was on footage handing it over, and his kids saw that. So that's... We have to see what's going to happen with that. Uh, His kids now know. It's the best thing that can happen. He needs to come out in the open. I think anyone that's suffering from addictions and stuff, it's always better when people know and they can help you Mm -hmm. and they can, and people find out because it's, it's just a never ending hole that -hmm. that Ed's digging for himself. You know what I mean? But thank God for Craig Tinker though, (laughs) because man, he's the most hardworking police officer since that Scottish woman who used to be the only police officer. I just like how you ran into, what's the son's name? What's Ed's son's Michael. name? Michael. Michael. Uh, Michael. Uh, Michael is in a hurry usually. Yeah. He's sort of like trying to get his words out as fast as he can. Yeah. And uh, I like when Craig met up with him on the road and he's like, oh, there's this thing. They bought it from the pawn shop and uh, we got to get the CCTV. And he goes, oh, well, and Craig's like, well, I'll, I'll put in a request for CCTV. And if I don't get it, I'll get a warrant. He goes, great. Why can you do that? I'm going to do it right now. Off he goes. i do it right now. I think that might People have been... have been murdered on this street. Surely there's something else going on. And this was like, I think, Boxing Day? Yeah, he's like, I'm on it. Got to head right into the <laughs> office. Uh, okay, a couple more things. This felt like a lot of stuff happened this week. I think it, it was Christmas. Listen, we're speeding through, speeding through, Shannon. We're speeding through. Take a deep breath. So unlike years where the whole Christmas Day episode is just Raquel and Curly locked in a flat. That was so long ago, though. This one had everybody. This, and yes. almost all of them were in the Barlow house. Yes. So over for Christmas dinner at the Barlow's, we had Tracy, Steve, Amy, Ken, Daniel, Bertie, Adam, mm. and Simon. Yeah. Eight people for dry Christmas. Yeah. That's a lot. Well, it didn't, the dry Christmas didn't last very long. <laughs> well, it did at that house. All those who else. were not dry for health reasons bailed. Well, I also uh, admired the fact that everyone waited until after the meal had been eaten to leave Tracy with eight people's worth of Christmas dinner to hand wash because there's no dishwasher in the Barlow house. <laughs> I would have been bolting the door with myself on the other side. I quite, here's the thing. Okay. So first of all, it was, wait, are you going to say it was nice and you'd love to have been there with them? No, 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 no. Okay. Not really. Um, okay. Here's the thing is that it, first of all, first off, it was nice to see that, that birdie is alive. We also right? briefly saw Kevin and Abby's kid. I don't even remember what they're called. No, I don't know either. Showed up is now like three years old, apparently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Spano. One scene. It was in one scene. Yeah. Um, but uh, so it was nice to see the birdie's an actual human. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. And uh, and phenomenal actor. Just like quiet. Just sat there on that couch. And pretended to be asleep later on. Yes. It was good. Yeah. On top of uh, Ken. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. It was some good acting, kid. Yeah. If you're listening. <laughs> so anyways. So anyway, the other part is... Uh, uh, is that to, I, I enjoy the Barlow chaos because they are Coronation Street royalty mm-hmm. and it is dysfunctional, but there's a dysfunction there where they kind of all kind of accept the fact that they're all horrible and, and weird. I agree. Which yep. I like. Yep. I, I agree. I like that. They're not. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. 
doesn't thought remind, I wasn't there. But. Doesn't remind me of my family at all or yours. <laughs> Um, the other thing that I think is starting to come out, mm. and we saw a little setup of that with everyone leaving and Simon heading off with his, uh, or heading off to a bar. Yeah. I think we're going to see oh, yeah. uh, that Simon is going to become an alcoholic. Following his Because, of course, he's got steps. his dad's predisposition, yeah. genetic predisposition. Yeah. And he's angry. He's just always He's angry. always angry. Yeah. You know, a good haircut. That's all that kid needs. I like his hair, but it needs to be tamed. I mean, I don't know if I'd want to live with Carla and Peter. No, but he's unnecessarily and, and angry. Ryan, mind you, he should be happier now because Ryan's gone. He can spread out a bit more. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. He's got there's there's too much there. But I mean, let's be let's be fair to Simon mm -hmm. in that his his uh, he hasn't had the smoothest of childhood upbringings. No. Nope. Been very rough. Yeah. And his dad has taken off more times than you can count. His mother died when he was young. His mother died when he was young. He's got a lot of, he's got a chip on his shoulder, an understandable chip on his shoulder. Well, luckily he has Leanne. Do you think Leanne's going to help? She's a very good mom to him. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Then the biggest yeah. storyline, uh, Peter. So we talked last week about how Peter was... Uh, being in big mopey pants, mm -hmm. you thought he was justified in his mopey pantsness. He had killed a person, Shannon. He had killed a person. He didn't want to kill anybody. And then they finds out afterwards, they're like, oh, you probably didn't need to kill him because he said he wasn't going to hurt anybody else now. Now, do I feel he should have just carried through? Of course he should have, because what choice <laughs> do you have? So I felt for him. The poor guy's living with a donated liver <laughs> and he's killed somebody and uh, he's, he's, he's a recovering alcoholic. There's a lot of going on, like poor And Peter. he has to go to the Barlow house. And. Well, he is the Barlow's, so that's. He's on the vapes, which hopefully he smells more like strawberry apple blossom instead of players. Yeah. <laughs> um, so for Christmas, Carla gave him a one-way ticket to go meet up with his pal mm, yeah, to sail the ocean to blue. about this, yeah. Um, so Peter's favorite thing to talk about, being in the Navy. Mm-hmm. Being on the ocean. Yeah. Uh, traveling. Yeah. Uh, doesn't seem to usually like to do anything about it. Just, you know, reminisce on how his life used to be great. He has, yeah, mentioned a few times, I think, that he's was in the Navy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he was upset at first. Mm -hmm. Felt Carla was mm -hmm. kicking him out because mm -hmm. he had to leave the next day to make it in time. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, what do we... Th so... After watching, I don't know, an episode dealing with this, I was so glad when Roy said to Carla, so what does this mean? And she said, what do you think it means? And I was thinking, what does it mean? Yeah, like, good question. And Roy. then Carla clarified it means, yeah, they've broken up. Yeah. I didn't get, after watching half an hour of them going through all this, I didn't, hadn't got they'd broken up. Oh, I think they were like sacrificing their love for his health. <laughs> for listeners at home, Shannon's yawning. <laughs> Um, I think that she, they were trying to do the right thing, but I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. It reminds me of the uh, SNL sketch with Adam Sandler, where he's doing the travel agency and he's like, come to Italy, uh, for two weeks of blah, 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 blah. But let me warn you that if you're sad now, you'll just be sad there. <laughs> you'll be sad in Italy. You'll be sad in Italy. Yeah. And it's like that idea where it's like he's like his our thing is going to get much better from him for him. Like he, all he does is run away and come back. Someone else has to listen to him moping. He's guaranteed coming back, though. Well, he's one of those legacy characters. Like yeah. he might be gone for five years and he'll come back and it'll be a big shocker. Yeah, uh, we did get we didn't get the crane shot uh, departure, means which usually done, means done. you're leaving for good. Yeah. But he did have a sort of a lineup of. Lineup of people, plus Characters. he had the montage of the montage of him, uh, like the audio montage of him walking past the rovers and stuff, and hearing. Oh yeah, Carla's that was all voice, weird. And then whatever his the mother of his child's voice, whatever her name was. Oh, was it her? I think so. Right. It wasn't Carla. Blonde flower lady. She no, not Shelly. No, Shelly. Sherry. Was... No, that was a different one. Mm, I don't know. Doesn't why didn't he? Didn't he? Wasn't he? Didn't he? Wasn't he? Okay, hang on. I gotta calm down. I'm getting excited about this. <laughs> Wasn't he married to two people at once and then kept one person trapped in a room in the Rovers for a bit? 
Mm, I don't know, but I do feel Shelly. Oh, is that Charlie? Someone will tell us in the comments. Is that? Oh, I was Charlie. Was it, was it Peter that also had, I think it was Peter who was also with Shelly when he was married to Simon's mom. He's married to Shelly. I believe Shelly. Remember she was in the pub? Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. I believe she left Coronation Street pregnant with Peter's child. <gasps> I might be wrong. Yes. I think you're right. But that was about 20 years ago, so I'm sure we'll see them soon. Okay, but let's let's go back to the more important question. Would you, if I was Mopey Pants and I had a, a transplanted liver and had killed a man recently <laughs> and spent some time in the Navy, would you send me off if I was like, I'm not happy? I don't, I don't know. What to do. Would you be like, here's a one-way ticket. Get out of here, babe. If you were like Peter, I never would have married you in the first <laughs> place. I don't know what the appeal is. Sorry. What if I smoked as well? Would that help? No. Okay. He looks like every pore of him smells of cigarettes a little bit. and all his clothing. I'm going to give him credit for his character, though. I think he probably smokes in real life, too. He does um, have that gravelly, deep voice that goes with it. Which you can keep after you quit smoking. <laughs> Are you saying that one... Like, it's pos it's possible he's that, vaping. Mm, it's possible he can he keep that to... after he quits smoking. Oh, no. There's, again, there's nothing appealing about Peter Barlow. Oh, that's so mean. He's just gone on the ship. Mean. I just he'll, never get, he'll be on the ship. He'll never get this message. So. <laughs> it's fine. I found that was weird. I found that was odd to sort of like say, here's your ticket, get out of here. And they were just kind of deciding. I thought, I don't know if that's going to make anyone happy. That just seems like a, too easy of a solution. No, then he's abandoned or kicked out. Or... Yeah, there's a whole other set of issues happening. Plus, how are you finding a meeting in countries that you don't speak the language? Yeah, she's not going to. And plus, I doubt they have AA meetings in countries that in the Middle East, like you know, Middle Eastern sort of area that don't allow alcohol. Is he going to is he going to come back? And he's going to just have a casual drink and be like, "Yeah, I drink now." I mean, Carla quit, and then now she drinks in moderation. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, last thing. Last thing. This is only very brief. Okay. Luckily, we all remembered that Carla last week, courtesy of last week, <laughs> that Carla, <laughs> meaning on our show, not the show. No, no. That Carla has a brother, Rob. Yeah. Who was the one who killed Tina in prison when Tina was having an affair with now, Peter. To be fair, we didn't determine any of that. It was all determined in the comments. Oh, yes. Thank you for that, by yeah. the way. Um, but anyways, so some new character came in hot. <laughs> he really did. He really did, as opposed to the flower shop guy. Damn it. We can't remember his name. I don't. We don't know if he said it. I don't know if he said it. Because I was waiting because I was like, oh, I don't know if I like this character. He's coming in a bit hot. If he says his name, we're toast. But then he said, Auntie Carla. Yeah. I am your brother Rob's son. Yeah. Rob, who's in prison. Yes. And he was, I didn't like his, I like the, well, this is weird to say, but I appreciated the fact that he was, uh, he had a walking frame and was obviously disabled. But in they're some actually way. casting it's people. Like that's, that's cool because this is real life. Casting that's, people. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, but then I thought it funny that she just, but Carla buzzed him up and he had to leave his walking frame at the bottom of the stairs and like shuffle up the stairs somehow, climb up. And then he got to the top, but he was a little too, uh, he was a bit too glib. Coming in hot. Coming in hot was right, Shannon. Yeah. But anyways, we'll reserve judgment. We'll see. So far I'm, I'm on for flower shop guy. I hope he ends up owning the Rovers. What if it's Rob's son who's coming in? He's like super rich because Rob's left him a bunch of stolen money from somewhere. Yeah, maybe. I doubt it. Wait, stolen money. Tina had no money. Yeah, but maybe Rob's had some stolen money somewhere. <laughs> it could happen. Oh. Um, oh, I had another thought. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Uh -huh. So, you know, we never catch up on what's happening ahead of time with the UK stuff. No. And as you've seen, we don't research when we can't remember who characters are. No. So that bit, thank you for the comments. No, as the I forward believe, thinking bit, we're not we're not trying to ever find I it. I believe uh, a woman named Lynn had said, "No plot highlights, just commentary, please." That's what I'm here for. <laughs> I'm happy to comment on the entire show and characters at large, and not try to keep track. But of what not happened. really know what's going on. Yeah, just kind of like I don't know. All I think right. that's what's happening. All right. Yeah, I'll give you Anyways, this one. Yeah. This one felt a bit rushed and jumbled. This, well, there was so much that happened. I mean, I the Christmas, it's a Christmas Day episode. Always a big episode. They always have some licensed music playing. It's always a big deal. And it's it's there's it's a big foo for of like all the characters in the street. It was nice to see all the characters. It was nice to see Kevin Webster back. We haven't seen, seen him in ages. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. There you go. Hopefully it's quieter next week. 
Well, we'll still make this show entertaining. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching and or listening to North of Weatherfield, the Canadian Coronation Street podcast. Um, we'll be back next week, right? We'll be back next week. So you can tune in then. You can tune in then. To see, because I won't be Daisy anymore. Oh, that's right. And I'm whatever that guy's name, Randall or Robbo. <laughs> I can't remember the character's name. And it's next Dee week. Dee Dee's boyfriend. Next week, I will get him to plan who he's going to be. <gasps> what if it's him that's going to be the Rover's return owner? Oh, okay. He seems like a nice guy. Him and Dee Dee as landlords, that'd be all right. What if he starts a relationship with the flower shop guy? He's lovely too. Uh, anything can happen on the cobbles, Shannon. Anything can happen. Hold for theme. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you next week.